Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to see the full house, and thank you so much for inviting me here. My first time in Australia, really happy to start discovering this beautiful country and culture. So uh, I would like to start with a bit of a, let me see if this is going. Oh, is this happening? Perfect. Um, I'd like to start with a bit of a more sort of poetical, conceptual, philosophical journey into the possibility space of what VR is, uh, why we're interested in it, etc. And then after I finish, I'd love to kind of get the hands dirty and to sort of discuss with you guys and ask me any questions and we can, and I'm pretty involved in a field, so you could be pretty specific and we could dig into um, any um, particular subjects that you'd like to speak about or clarify anything from the talk. So here we go. I want to start with some inspiration. So with this talk, um, I'd like to invite you to reimagine what content could mean as virtual reality is finally becoming a reality. The digital world will soon enough be enmeshed with the physical world in such a way that our reality will be the transparency mode that we choose. The advent of digital realities is an opportunity for us to imagine the way we experience information. The future of immersive media technology is the future of computation. We're leaving the glowing rectangular screens behind to step into a computational space where the world is our desktop. Virtual, augmented, and mixed reality technologies alongside artificial intelligence will change how we do everything that we do today and much more that we yet unable to imagine. Fast forward five to ten years in the context of the breakthroughs in neuroscience, AI, robotics, and the bleeding edge development in VR, MR, and AR. Think of all the ways we could be acquiring and creating knowledge. As we go into this future without screens, we must pay attention to the context that our innovations shall be set in. We have been witnessing the loudest voices in the internet, on the media, and politics screaming for alienation versus communication, enclosure versus openness, and fear versus curiosity. In the light of recent events, I cannot help but admit I have been somewhat troubled by how narrowly we have been approaching our work, even we, even this very group that calls themselves dreamers and explorers. Our work is never just entertainment or marketing or science or technology. We are, in fact, creating culture. More than ever before, we must think what ideologies the content we create could empower. More than ever before, we must think what behavior the technologies we develop could enable. Stanislaw Lem wrote, there are no answers, only choices. So what are the choices we are willing to make? What if instead of following the future, we go and build one? The greatest science fiction is less about extravagant dives into tomorrow and more about bringing our attention to the choices we are making today. What made me fall for virtual reality is that it could give us that necessary distance to engage with our physical reality in a more open way. By understanding what we desire and fear in the virtual worlds, we can indeed learn about our engagement with the physical world. VR can be an opportunity for us to visualize, experience, and interact with complexities of physical reality in a new way. So here are some vital questions to ask. How much of the physical world do we want to change, modify, or replace with the digital? How much of our data and privacy are we willing to surrender to the providers of the digital worlds? Unintended consequences of new technologies wreak havoc more severe and more widespread than we want to admit. We need to look no further than Charlie Brooker's Black Mirror or Keiichi Mitsuda's hyperreality to see the prototypes of the future where the merger of the digital and physical space goes terribly wrong. And these are important cautionary tales, and really digging in to understand what and how things could go wrong is the only way to do it right. And the urgency to do it more right than wrong is real. The technological progress is unstoppable, but we should not be embracing it blindly. I believe that we are in the beginning of a beginning of a technology that could be indistinguishable from magic, but only and only if we choose it to be so. If the intellect is the fuel of our rocket engine, the vision is the direction our rocket shall fly. And technological innovation without humanitarian evolution equals dystopian future.
or shall I say, dystopian present? Media is the modern day mythology. It lays the foundations of our civilization and becomes the ideology upon which we build our societal values and inform our policies for generations to come. A blockbuster superhero figure saving alone the world seems a fun, and fun story and an escape fantasy, but it actually perpetuates a false archetype of the singular hero. And it paves the path for somebody like Donald Trump, credibly saying that he and he alone can save America. So ideas have impact. How we speak matters, how we see matters. In fact, it all starts with how we see the world. The media we create becomes us. The spaces we design become us, and the fictions we tell, if they are compelling at all, always bleed back into reality. So can we imagine the future as a possibility space that we create together? Together as collaborative entities of humans, yes, but also as collaborative entity of human and machine intelligence. We have created augmentations for ourselves perhaps for as long as we have existed. Technology is an extension of our biology. From slingshots to satellites, from eyeglasses and hearing aids to AR glasses and digital sound processing, from canes and crutches to exoskeleton suits, we are constantly evolving how we engage and augment ourselves. AI and digital assistants, AR, VR, MR, are all part of the amazing creative output of our species. It is up to us as a community, as it has always been, to continue to model the examples of doing good with what we create and focus on helping us all reach our potential. To quote Ordi Tank and this poem of hers, for me, is one amazing manifesto for a kinder future. When we see Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it about shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And when we hear the singularity is near, let us remember the plurality is here. So we need more stories of plurality. We need more platforms for inclusion. We need more technologies for collaboration. How can we actually embed the very collaboration in the very essence of things we design? Can we shift the conversation from virtual reality being a space of isolation to virtual reality being a space of resistance, of connection, of belonging? Instead of escaping reality, can we find pathways to co-presence and creation that, translate, that transcend our physical reality? Because we will have to find new ways to resist the borders that are being imposed on us. As the men in ill-fitted suits want to build walls, we, we must build bridges. I want us to envision VR, AR, and MR as the most amazing medium and tool we have ever had to facilitate understanding, learning, and connecting with each other across and beyond the borders. I want us to think how VR could make the physical borders between us obsolete. I want us to think how VR could make the physical borders between us, in fact, obsolete. Virtual reality is a space that can manifest its full potential only if we all come together and work together toward a shared goal. The reason there is truly little extraordinary VR, AR, and MR content is because we've been still working in our boxes. Engineers with engineers, game people with game people, directors with their producers, and artists with artists. To create something truly new in this space, we need to step out of our echo chambers. And we are held back not as much by early stage technology, but by our lack of imagination, by our unwillingness to step and have the conversation outside our comfort zone, and our inability to really collaborate across cultures, disciplines, and generations. We need to open our imagination, convert it to conversations, to collaborations, creating outcomes of transformation. Too often we'll reach for the low-hanging fruit, even while being aware that could very possibly hurt the medium long-term. Our short-term goals might kill our vision. T.S. Eliot wrote, to become what you are not, you have to go the way that you are not. And so we cannot continue dragging the old media into this new medium. 
and we cannot continue ha dragging the old bad habits of the old medium into this new media space that we create. We have to shift our thinking from creating content within the frame of screens to creating the space we move through and interact with as our content matrix. Screens had to compete with all the other distractions in our physical space, and we compensated for that distance with all the extra stuff that would terrify us in real life. The insanely fast pace, violent action, exaggerated visual effects. But what does it mean now that we won't be watching it anymore, but actually being in it? It is not anymore about suspension of disbelief, it is about belief. Virtual reality is an experience that requires trust. Elon Rudberg once said, you don't even notice your subconscious mind until you get scared or horny. Inherited wounds are the background radiation of our lives, and VR visually taps into all that we are, including our personal histories. When we experience digital space, just like with the physical space, we bring all of our subconscious trauma. More often than not, we're not even aware of. It is easiest to achieve emotional reactions by triggering our fears. That's why we've been seeing so much violence and horror-based content. YouTube is full of videos of people freaking out, being attacked by virtual zombies. And that seems funny until that actually happens to you. So we will witness the very real PTSD to virtual experience. We will see people harmed, crippled, terrified, traumatized by experiences that did not happen to their physical bodies at all. The experience is virtual, but the fear is very real. Is the experience just virtual if it causes real emotional damage? In 90% of VR I have tried, cheap claustrophobic tricks have been employed to make me move through space by triggering, by triggering sort of, by closing in that space or action or time, closing it on me. The, if the only way you can motivate my actions is by threatening me with death, then the current version of the medium suffers from a serious case of arrested development. I invite you to support the media and technology that will help open us up, not continue closing us down. My creative partner, Howard Goldcren, asks, how can we design our future as a compassionate, collaborative network? All this might seem a daunting task today, I know, but if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? With the advent of immersive media, we're about to fully realize the awesome and the awesomely terrifying power of content. I want you to think how the content we create could help us move past the outdated, ossified structures of the existing society and visualize the more inspiring world that tomorrow could actually be. I want you to think how the new infrastructures we design could enable the new participatory story world. And throughout my life, I've moved from creating still images to moving images, to immersive spaces, to expansive fictional worlds. But what I have seen all across is not the discontinuity in the media, but a continuum of human experiences, where you make me feel so much more than what you make. Alicia Naples, who led the design of user experience and interaction at Magic Leap, and who did an amazing talk earlier today, says, do not make something about something. Make something that actually is something. And the more I work in a field, the more I realize that there isn't really such thing as a grammar of virtual reality. We're trying to establish format compatibilities and certain rules of engagement and interaction, but the bigger question here is, how do we craft reality situations? How do we design possibility spaces? And my number one, my personal number one rule for creating good virtual reality content is consciousness ag around engaging with our physical reality. Observing what makes us react to physical experiences, how we move through physical space, how we interact with physical objects, paying attention to these laws of interaction so we can bend and open them to an even wider array of possibilities within the digital and virtual space. VR does not exist without interaction. Audience is not just audience anymore, and more even than just a participator. The ones that are experiencing the virtual world ultimately are the creators of their own experience. It's not as much about what you design, but what we can do and how we feel in your design. It's not as much about your subject matter, but how you approach it. But for the future of this technology to be as good as we dream it to be, 
In some way, it has to become transparent. And Bruce Sterling says, we can no longer allow ourselves to be hypnotized by the sense of technical novelty. We should look at it like it is already passé and create it from that point of view. It must be good without us considering that it is new. If we experience it only as good because it is new, it won't be good for long. Innovation is not a gadget. We do not have a technology problem. Accuracy is not the only measure of quality. In volumetric VR space, most seem to be pursing the pixel-perfect recreation of reality. That is something we need, but it's not the only thing that we need, and certainly not what we need most. It's how you are connecting me to your created reality in a virtual space. It is vital that more time, energy, and resources go to the actual R&D of content. Not just platforms, not just hardware, but actual content. Because VR is not hardware. VR is not platforms. VR is an experience. VR is a journey leading ultimately into experiencing your own inner space. And VR is not new. It is simply a technology that can finally begin to echo what the shamans of time immemorial have been bringing us to through their sacred rituals. Rituals that since, that since their inception have had a goal of teaching us how to dive deeper into the parts of our psyche unknown to our conscious mind so we could learn how to come closer to the world that we are inextricably linked with. I know this might seem somewhat esoteric, but that's what being in the space, knowing that that space is not there, actually is. It is literally an out-of-body experience. More than ever before, creation, be it artistic, scientific, or technological, needs to have some of that shamanism within it. I dream of technologies that could help us heal our wounds as individuals, as cultures, as societies, as species. Our technology should not just be about solving practical problems. The greatest inventions inspire us to invent more. The greatest innovations of tomorrow would actually be about inspiring us to connect deeper with each other. Creativity is not about devising new ways or smarter ways of selling things people do not need. Creativity is about creating moments of unique experience. Experience that expands the human potential, intellectually, creatively, emotionally, or physically. What we need more than anything for a long-term future to be a more inhabitable place is infrastructures and tools that allow us to be creative about our own lives. What we need is not more technology-driven experiences, but experience-driven technology. We want technology that supports us in becoming the best version of ourselves. We want technology that can take us further beyond our physical bodies so we can bring back that digital possibility space into our physical lives. So now is the future. Every day, with everything that we do, we create the culture of the future that we and everybody else will be inhabiting. So if I can leave you with one, and only one question, that is, what is the future that you want to create? Thank you.